Hello, this is Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins. Now this video is meant for people who just received a new violin. More specifically, it's probably best suited for people who are kind of new to the violin, and even more specifically, people who may have bought their violin from Amazon. Now, if you're new to the violin in particular, it's really important to watch this video before you try to play your violin because a lot of our customers who are new to the violin, they, they get the impression that maybe there's something missing with their violin or maybe there's something wrong or broken with it or something like that. But through thousands and thousands of orders, we've found that 99.9% .9 of the time there's actually nothing wrong with the instrument and everything's there. So I'm here to answer those questions really quickly today for you. Now, one of the most common questions that we get from customers is, where's all my accessories? My violin was supposed to come with a shoulder rest and a tuner and a cleaning cloth and a rosin and all this stuff, and I can't find them. And they look in their case and they're not, not there. Uh, what they don't realize, though, is that we actually put them in a separate box that's inside your Kennedy Violins box. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's your Kennedy Violins box. You probably recognize it, right? Now, if you look inside, there's a couple of cardboard spaces on either end, but perhaps intermingled with all the bubble wrap and everything, you have an extra box. So we put all your accessories that either came with your violin or your purchase extra or whatever inside this little box. Now, if you purchase a school book, like a, like a Suzuki music book or Essential Elements or something like that, it's going to be in your violin case. So it's either going to be immediately inside your case when you open it, or it's going to be in a little pocket on the top of the case. So you undo a couple zippers, you look in this pocket, and then your uh, school book will be right there. Now, another question we get is people look at their bow for the first time and they think that it might be broken or defective or something like that. So first of all, uh, when you look at your case, and you might have a different case than this, we have a lot of different cases, but the bow always fits in a certain way. So there's a little bow winder here, and you turn it horizontally, and then you pull your bow out. Okay? Now, here's your bow. Uh, now, your bow has a bow to it, right? Um, it's not straight. So a lot of customers are confused. They believe that their bow should be straight, but it's actually supposed to have this curve to it. And uh, the only curve that you don't want is, you know, if you sight down it like this and then it's bent this way or it's bent that way. Now that would be warped. But we do check for warpage, warpage you know, before we, we send the bows out. Now another uh, challenge that you might see is you might see broken hairs, okay? Now this is really, really common with bows, especially when they're new. Bows always have extra hair, and so if you lose a hair or two when you're playing, especially for the first time, it's very, very common. It's not a problem. So if you have a hair like this, you simply just go like that, and you pull them out, and you're just fine. Now, one reason why you might get broken hairs is if your bow is too tight. So when you tighten your bow, you get the screw, and you turn it clockwise, okay? And now you're looking at the distance between the hair of the bow and the bow. And it should be about a pencil width or a, a, a pinky width, okay? So if you tighten it too much, you could break your bow, you could break hairs, you could, you, we see uh, breakages here, if the tips will break or, or something like this down here. So just make sure you don't tighten your bow too much. And then every time you put your bow away, make sure you loosen that bow, turn that screw counterclockwise, and then put the bow away every time you're done practicing. Now another question we get is a lot of times people feel that their bridge is broken or it's defective or something like that. So your bridge is not attached to the violin. It's actually just held in by the tension of the strings. So during transit, sometimes your bow will move around and so you just have to simply get, get your, your index and your thumb and then just put the bridge you know, where it's supposed to be and we have videos to show you how to do that. But more than likely, a lot of our customers, you know, they'll see the bridge and they'll think that it's crooked, like it's leaning this way or it's leaning this way. But it's actually an optical illusion. So the back of your bridge is carved flat and it's supposed to be a 90 degree to the top of your violin. However, the front of your bridge, the belly, is carved asymmetrically, and when you look at it, it looks like it's actually leaning really far back, but it's just an optical illusion, so this is the way that your bridge is supposed to be. But if your bridge is leaning forward, which is caused by your brand new strings stretching, and then it pulls the bridge forward, if that's the case, you simply you know, grab the bridge with your thumb and your index, just like I was mentioning before, and then you just move the bridge a little bit back and then you're perfectly fine. But again, we have videos to provide more details on that. One big challenge that we see with new violins in particular is slipping pegs. 
So these pegs are just, you know, they stay in their position with friction. They're not like guitar pegs. They won't stay in position. They're just friction. So the violin has to travel with differing humidity conditions and all these other temperatures and everything else from us in Washington State to whatever state that you might happen to be in. And sometimes these pegs will slip. It's perfectly normal and this just happens to violins. In fact, it's been a problem for violins for literally hundreds of years. Now, uh, I won't show you all the details on how to fix a slipping peg in this video. You can look at the video that we have the link below and you'll be able to see exactly how to fix your uh, string if it's loose. Um, it literally takes like 10 to 20 seconds to fix it once you get really good at it. Um, but when you get your violin, the, a peg may have slipped so much that your string, let's say this E string, this tiniest string, is just laying on the side, right? I mean, it's not even on the bridge. It looks like it's broken, but it's not. So you would just simply get the string, put it back on the bridge in that little notch, make sure that a green or black little piece of plastic is on the bridge that protects the string from the bridge, and then you just simply get your, your peg, and then you just tune the string. Now if your peg slips, you know, uh, you, you tune it, and your peg won't stay, and you, you know, your peg won't stay in position. Just uh, push your peg in while you turn it, and then the peg will stay. Um, there's a little bit more to that, more to it than that, to have your string stay for a longer period of time. But like I said, just check out the video. It's really simple. Now, another issue that might happen is you might break a string. Well, don't worry about it. Strings break all the time. Strings are a wear item. They're like gas or tires or oil in your car. They're gonna break and you're gonna have to switch out the strings at some point. So it's good to learn how to replace strings. So if you are tuning your violin for the first time and you break a string or you've received your violin and it broke during transit, it's not a big deal. Just get a string out of the backup set and then put it on your violin and tune it up. And we have videos for that as well. Now the next thing I wanna mention is that your violin is handmade. It's probably got an oil finish or a spirit finish or something like that. So when you have something that's made out of wood and it's handmade, it's just not going to be perfect. Now, if it was a toaster or, you know, a door holder or, I don't know, a spatula, you know, it, it might be perfect, you know, but violins are just not perfect. You know, if you look at this violin and you look really, really carefully, now, even though it's beautiful and it's got nice wood in it, if you look really hard, you're going to find some, you know, imperfections in the wood. You might find a little line that goes down here. Maybe you'll find a little swirl or a circle or something like that. This is very, very common with handmade instruments that are made of wood because wood is a natural substance and it's just not perfect. So don't be alarmed if you know you see something that's a little, a little off. Now, if you buy a clearance violin from us, then you know there might be uh, maybe a little bit of a varnish issue or something like that. But we find that most of our customers, when they buy clearance violins, they can't even find the imperfections. So it's it's um, it's something that is to be expected. Another thing I'll point out is the necks. So necks are not varnished on purpose. This is traditional violin making that goes back hundreds of years. If the necks were varnished, then the neck, the varnish would wear off while you're playing, and then it would get all over your hands and it would look really bad. So, uh, and it would also be harder to play the instrument. So violin necks are not varnished on purpose. So if you go online and you look at, you know, some really nice violins, you know, Stradivarius, Guanari, Steiner, whatever, you're going to find all the pictures of nice violins that you find on the internet. None of them have varnish on the necks. Now, another thing I want to mention really quick is, what if you go to play your violin the first time you get your bow out, you've tightened it properly and everything else, but you don't get very much sound out of your instrument? Is the bow defective or is the violin screwy? I mean, you know, what's going on? Well, more than likely, you just need more rosin on your bow. So the more rosin you put on the bow, the more sound that you get out. Now, we pre-rosin the bows before we send them out, but they're brand new bows and sometimes they just need more rosin. So you just take your rosin cake and you tighten your bow and then you just slowly go back and forth. And then you go back and forth like six to 10 times, and then you try it on the violin, and you just repeat this until you get the sound that you want. And you'll have to do this, you know, a fair amount over the first month that you own your violin because the bow is new. 
So that's about it. That's most of the questions that we get from customers and that's a lot of the confusion that we especially get from new violin owners. So don't forget, your Kennedy Violins violin has a lifetime warranty. And Kennedy Violins is staffed by people who all play violin. So you can give us a call, you can email us. You know, we're here to help you. We are violinists, we're players, we're teachers, we're, we're parents, we're professionals. You know, we're here to improve the violin community. So just give us a call. We're always happy to help anytime.